So in John 17, Jesus prays that we would be one so that the world would believe that the Father sent him. And he, he clearly goes on in that context to say, I'm not just praying for the people that are here, I'm praying those that are believe on, on uh, their word. So based on that prayer, based on the fact that, that Jesus said, uh, you know, I, I want them to be one so that the world will believe, how do you see the importance of unity today? And what, what should that mean for us as Christians? Oh my. <clears throat> well, it looks like us stepping out of our comfort zone of being an, in control as leaders. And I really think a, a part of my ministry has really focused on, on leaders because I think that's where the biggest problem lies. We, we, we're endeavoring to protect that which we have built up to a certain point, but it doesn't fit in the total. So uh, we have to get out of that mindset. So it's really a, 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 a shift in the, in the thinking of, of the typical uh, local church pastor or leadership of just thinking about self. So, so how did that shift occur in your own life, would you say? You know, for me, it, it began when I united with other uh, pastors and leaders uh, to pray. That was not a part of my typical doing ministry. I was really changed years ago as I was exposed to just normally doing church uh, as, as usual and just had an average sized church. And it was, I was introduced to prayer, the importance of prayer. Now I believed in prayer, uh, but really uh, a pastor's prayer summit uh, totally shifted my thinking uh, as to what God could do when we would unite to pray. And that ties back to an Old Testament passage that says, if my people if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and do what? Pray. So we began to realize we need to humble ourselves and pray. A posture of saying, God, we can't, but you can. Uh, what I've come to learn, you know, I used to believe in that, that passage of scripture that talks about where two or three agree. God hears and he answers. We're all familiar with that. And I used to think the word agree was like we agree that this couch is black or your shirt is green and mine is blue. And that's not what the, the original word means. The word agree comes from the word symphony. And so it began to shift my thinking. If we're going to answer the prayer of Jesus in John 17, we're not going to come to agreement because you may be colorblind <laughs> or, or I may be or our perspective is different. And so it's not about that we agreed totally on every doctrine. And so we, we begin to move in, in, in our prayer and in our function in a, like a symphony. Well, what's a symphony? Why don't you tell me a little bit? What's, what, what are the components of a symphony? All different instruments, but all playing together. Exactly. And so we all have different gifts, different sounds, different passions. So where, we, where two or three are in symphony or in harmony, God hears and he answers. So we've been all independent. And so I was as well as a pastor for years, doing what I thought was best. Like the Apostle Paul, he was sincerely serving God as he persecuted the Christians. But he was sincerely wrong. And I think I was sincerely wrong as a leader, as a pastor, in the sense that I th somehow felt that I could fulfill the great commandment, the great commission as one church. Well, it wasn't happening. But when I began to see the power when we would come together to pray, and when we would pray, a different passion would come from different leaders, a different emphasis, uh, uh, a different angle, like a symphony. So when we were praying together, I began to see brothers who loved Jesus as much, if not in ways more than me. And it, and it shocked me but it opened my heart to begin to look at the ways in which my, my judgments and my attitude w were hindering the flow of the Spirit of God in my personal life and in my ministry. And I was blind to that until I, I connected with others. I had been a pastor, I'd started uh, numbers of churches through the years and had been fairly successful, but nothing to the degree that I began to see once we began to be concerned for one another. Which, and when we were praying together, you develop an intimacy when you're praying for each other's spouses, praying for each other's children by name, and for each other's ministries that God would bless. 
Now for us, we were meeting, meeting and it grew to meet on a weekly basis. And we would average 30 to 40 plus senior leaders uh, on a weekly basis, praying for one another. That's a whole shift of priority. That's huge. Uh, to, because I had the excuse, well, I'm too busy. And I didn't go to the first prayer summit that I was invited to. And, and I think really when I look back on it, it was fear. And so I had to let go of my pride or my insecurities and go. And in doing so, the Spirit of God really worked significantly in my life. And it changed the whole shift of, of how I did things, both in my local church, as well as, of course, as he began to move to unite us uh, 